Hi, this is Janet Eifert. In today's lesson, I want to work through my measures worksheets book. So, what are we going to learn in this lesson? We are going to learn how to convert between metric and imperial units. And the way to do it is to multiply and divide by 10, 100 and 1000 if you only work with metrics. With imperials, we're going to follow our ratio method. We will do all of that. We will do maps and scale drawings. We will do more advanced work on area and volume. And we will do word problems. So let's get started. So first of all, is this is something that's quite hard to remember, isn't it? Lots of numbers and names to remember. So we're going to see how can we make it easier. Now all you have to remember will be this and the rest you can quickly work out. You need to know one kilometer is a thousand meters, one meter a thousand millimeters. See it's always a thousand except for when it is centi. One meter is a hundred centimeters, so centi is a hundred. But one centimeter is 10 millimeters and you can see that on your ruler. Every time you use a ruler you see that one centimeter is 10 little millimeters. Now if you want to know mass grams you just go and change this M to a G. So it becomes kilo, one kilogram is a thousand grams. If you want to know liters you change the M to a L. One kiloliter is a thousand liters. The same for this. One gram is a thousand milligram, or one liter is a thousand milliliter. So can you see if you learn this, you can know these ones. One centiliter is ten milliliter, and so on. Okay, so learn that one and then you can work out this. Let's move on. Here I just have a list of the names of the metric and imperial length, mass and capacity or volume that you need to know. The symbols for them and And there at the bottom there's all the numbers you need to remember. So try to fill this in, pause the video, try to do as many as you can. I'm moving now to the answers. And there you go, there's the answers. You can check how many you knew of them. Okay, we're going to move on to so pause the video if you still want to check. Just quickly, can you times by 10, 100 and 1000? We do this in more detail in the decimal workbook. Watch that video. We're just quickly going to check can you times. So 7 times 10, think about, you just add a zero. That's how you learned it, isn't it? You just add a zero, so it's 70. But I want to think a bit different about it. 7 is also 7.0, so you can move that point one space and your new point sit there, so it's 70. Okay, think of 7.00. I just put the zeros there because I know I need them. Times by 100, my answer gets bigger when I times. So move the point to the right, one, two. So my new point sit here. So it's seven, zero, zero. Remember, there can only be one point, one decimal point in a number. Seven times a thousand, seven. We can add as many zeros after a point as we like, as we need, really. Move the point. One, two, three. My new point set here. It's not there anymore. So it is 7,000. Okay, that is the way you need to think when you want to times decimals. So now that method should help you to times any of these. Let's look at this number 45.8 times 10. 
45.8 and I times by 10 I move the point one space it moves from there to there it's not there anymore it is now 458 45.8 times a thousand can you see we need more zeros it helps us one two three the new point said there it's not there anymore it is four five eight oh oh okay pause the video you try to do the rest i'm moving to the answers now and there you go pause the video to check your answers i'm moving to the next page divide by ten okay so what you've learned before is maybe just to knock off a zero when you divide by 10 so if you think of taking that zero off it's six seven oh isn't it but let's think if you divide you make your answers smaller don't you you share something with someone else so you get less so you move the point back one space my new point sit here and i don't need that zero anymore so six seven oh oh point there's an invisible point of to any number and zeros we don't need those zeros we are making our answers smaller when we divide move the point back one two so my new point is there not there six seven point zero zero which is six seven okay now six seven zero zero points at there we move back three because we've got three zeros one two three my points are there and not there anymore so it's six point seven oh oh six point seven oh oh do we need those zeros no we don't so throw them away six point seven is the answer okay pause the video you try to do the rest if you still struggle with this go back to my division um my book on decimal numbers in there we work on this a bit okay pause the video do the rest i'm moving on there's the answers pause the video to check i am moving on okay now we are going to do metric conversions for the metric conversions you need to be able to times by ten hundred and a thousand and divide by ten hundred and a thousand so let's look at this one change 420 grams to kilograms now you should know that one kilogram is a thousand grams so let's write that down we know that one kilogram is a thousand grams now let's look if you have a one and you get a thousand how do you get it you times by a thousand if you have a thousand and you want a one you need to do the opposite you divide by a thousand so from grams to kilograms we divide by a thousand so if you have the 420 you have a point there you move it back three spaces don't you one two three my new point sit here not there anymore in other words we need a zero before a point and we that is a whole number decimal point and then the fraction but so the answer is 0 0.42 kilogram and you don't need that zero anymore do you okay shall we try which other one centimeters and meters we know that one meter is a hundred centimeters that you need to know one meter is a hundred centimeters so from if you have a one and you want to get a hundred you times a hundred if you have a hundred and you want a one you divide by a hundred so let's look we're doing centimeters to meters in other words we need to divide by a hundred take the point there move it back one two so my new point set between the three and the four so it is three point four two meters 
Okay, pause the video. You try to do the rest. I'm moving now to the answers. There's the answers. Please check. I've showed you what to times and divide with. If you would download the book by clicking on the link below, you will find a lot more examples to work through. You can print it out as many times as you like and practice. Practice makes perfect. Okay, we're moving on to metric and imperial units. In this case, I start off with an example which is miles and kilometers. Now, they might give this ratio to you or you might have to learn it depending on what exam you do. So, what you will be given or know is that 5 miles equal 8 kilometers. Can you see there's 5 letters here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the 5 and the 5 goes together. Now we have 30 miles, so write it under your miles, yeah? You would not write your miles under your kilometers. The same goes with the same. Now how do you get from 5 to 30? 5. Now remember, you work with a ratio, you can only times and divide. How do you get from 5 to 30? 5 times 6 is 30. If you didn't, couldn't see that easily, you would do th you would do, how do I get that 6, you would say, 30 divided by 5, wouldn't you? So thinking of a method here, you can say bottom divided by top. This is our method. Bottom number divide top number. And the answer you get, that is the one that you times with on both sides. Okay? On both sides you will times with that answer which you get by bottom divide by top. This will help us to do the other sums which is maybe not that easy to see. If you times the eight, the 5 by 6 you have to also times the 8 by 6 and 8 times 6 is 48 and that is kilometers. So your answer is 48 kilometers. Okay, shall we try the next one? 6 kilograms into pounds. If you want to try this on your own, pause the video now. And I'm going to just work through this one with you. We should know that, or you should be given that 1 kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. And now you have 6 kilogram here. So you can either say 6 divided by 1 is 6. Or you might just see that 1 times 6 is 6. Hopefully you can just see it. And if you would say, in, in this case we can just do it on our calculator, but you should also be able to do that sum without a calculator. 2.2 .2 times 6. And that gives us 13.2 pounds. Okay, so that is the answer. Pause the video, you try to do the rest. I'm moving now to the answers. Okay, did you get all of them wrong? I mean, did you get all of them right, hopefully? Let's just check this one, because this one is a bit harder than the rest. We, they want to know pints, liters. So we have this ratio, one liter is 1.75 pints, which you should be given. Okay, now we write our 360 pints under the pints, don't we? Now we will think, how do we get from <coughs> there to there? Can you remember what we say? It's the bottom number divided by the top number. So what you will do is you will say this, bottom number divided by top number. And if you would do that on your calculator, 360 divided by 1.17, you get an answer of, it is actually 360 divided by 1.75, isn't it? 1.75, you will get the answer of 
205. Now this number will go on forever. Let's make it to two decimal places, round it to two decimal places. And then you think, I actually take this number and I times it worth this number. 205.71 to get 360. So I need to times here also by 205.71 and 1 times 205.71 is 205.71 isn't it? So that is your answer. If you want to look at one more, convert 360 centimeters into feet. So we should know that one foot is 30 centimeters. We write our 360 there. So how do we get from 3 to 360? We say bottom divide by top. We say 360 divide 30. How can we divide this? You will learn this in my decimal workbook, but you can cancel those zeros and just say 36 divided by 3 is 12. In other words, 30 times 12, check this, 12 times 3 is 36 with a 0. In other words, 1 times 12 is 12 and 12 feet is your answer. Okay, if you still want to look at this sheet, please, please. It's too late now. We have moved to maps and scale drawings. Okay, we have a map with a scale of 1 to 25,000. This means 1 centimeter is 25,000 centimeters in real life. Okay? The map is the one centimeter and that is so we throw away the centimeters but then we can add it back in to help us do the calculation. Now there's many ways to do this but the easiest I would think is to just look at this and then think what distance would be represented. So let's think if we can change this centimeters into meters first. We know that one meter is 100 centimeters. In other words, we can think from centimeters to meters we divide by 100 and we. So let's divide that by 100 and we can just knock off two zeros, can't we? We get 250 meters. If you want to change that to kilometers, you can at this stage because we know that one kilometer is a thousand meters, don't we? So from meters to kilometers, we divide by a thousand. So move your point back there, it is one, two, three. So that is 0 0.25 kilometers, isn't it? which you can also work with as if you want to do this mentally you can see that as a quarter of a kilometer if you need to because then you can just divide by four but don't think about that too much if that will confuse you at this stage so we know that one centimeter on the map is 0.25 kilometers in other words if we want to know what is two centimeters on the map it is double, isn't it, times by two. So times by two that side. In other words, that will be 0 0.50, which is 0 0.5 kilometers. Okay, so that isn't too bad. Then, if you wanted to know five centimeter on the map, you would have just times by five, wouldn't you? One times five is five. And then you would say, times by 5 there. Okay, and you, if you say 25 times 5, it's a 125. And then we put back the points, the one point, it's 1.25 kilometers, okay? What length on the map is represented by 24 kilometers? Okay, let's write down the ratio we worked out, which we said 1 centimeter is 
0.25 kilometers and we want this to be 24 kilometers so what are you going to do our ratio method is bottom divided by top so you would say on your calculator or you can do it mentally 24 divided by 0.25 is 96 so that means we times this side by 96 in other words we times this side by 96 so it is 96 centimeters if you wanted to do 24 divided by 0 0.25 that mentally you could have thought that's the same as 24 divided by a quarter isn't it which is if you divide fractions you times with a reciprocal so 24 times 4 and 24 times 4 you can think 20 times 4 is 80 and 4 times 4 is 16 and that is 96 isn't it so all of these you can do either mentally or with a calculator it is also always good to check can you do things mentally if you need help with a mental math Please look at my other videos, I do tend to go in detail on that. Ok, you try the rest, pause the video, I'm moving on to the answers. And there you go, there's the answers. Please check, pause the video to check, we're moving on. And now this one is just a little bit harder, a little bit advanced. If the ratio of a plan to real life is 1 to 120, what would be the area? Okay, let's look. It is 1 centimeter to 120 centimeter. So let's work out what is the ratio of the area. We know that 1 centimeter times 1 centimeter is 1 centimeter squared, isn't it? And here the area would be 120 centimeters times 120 centimeters. And we know that 12 times 12 is 144 with another two zeros. So that is centimeter squared. And now what I have here is 50,000 centimeters squared. So remember our m method, bottom divide by top. If you would go on your calculator, 50,000 divide 144,000, you'll get an answer of 3.472. And it goes on forever. Let's round that answer to 3.47. In other words, what we do is we times this number 14400 we would probably say 14400 times by 3.47 to get to 50,000 so you times here by 3.47 and 1 times that is that number centimeter squared okay now here I try to explain to you the length is just the a to b. The area would be a times a a squared to b times b b squared as we did there. For the volume similar thing but it's a times a times a and b times b times b. And then if you did have the volume and you want to work back to your length you would cube root that and if you had the area and you want to work back to your length you would square root that okay okay then try the next one we move on to the next to the answers and there you go there's your answers check there's more examples in the workbook so please download it to practice more okay we're moving on and now we just have some basic word problems which a primary school child should be able to do or key stage free and definitely any GCSE student should be able to do these sums for a C grade. 
I'm not going to work through this. I'm going to leave you to do this on your own. Pause the video, see if you can do that. I'm moving now to the answers and there you go. There is the answers. Please check. Pause the video to check. I think it is quite straightforward. So we're moving on to the next. Here I thought let's just have a very quick look. I'm not going into areas and perimeters in this workbook, but just a quick reminder. What is an area if I have a rectangle? It is just 20 times 5. 20 times 5, which is 100. And in this case it is meter times meter, so meter squared. What is the perimeter? It will be 20 plus 5 plus 20 plus 5, isn't it? 40, 50. So 50, and we added it, so it's just meters. Okay. Let's look at speed. Calculate the average speed. So we have, what do we have here? A train travels 240 miles in three hours. Calculate the speed in kilometers per hour. So first of all, we have the hours, but we have uh, that in miles. So we have to follow our ratio of 5 miles equal 8 kilometers to work out how many kilometers that is. So write your 240 here and you pause the video and try to work out what that is. Okay, did you get 384 hopefully? 384, how do you get that? 240 divided by 5, which gives you 48, and then you times by 8 to get the 384, yeah? In other words, what does this say to us? The 240 miles is now 384 kilometers, and we go 384 kilometers in 3 hours. Okay, this is probably a very fast moving object. Now we want to know kilometers per hour. That means we want to know kilometers in one hour. So we want to know what it is in one hour. So can you see to get from three to one, you divide by three. So you divide by three. And if you say 384 divided by 3, you should get 128. If you do not are not allowed a calculator, you will do the division like that, won't you? 3 in 3, 1, 3 in 8, 2, 2 times 3, 6, there's 2 remainder, 3 in 24, 8. If you don't know this, not confident, please go to my division workbook. Okay. Okay, pause the video, you try to do the rest. And there's the answers for you, please check it. Pause the video to check. And we've reached the end of the video. Please go to my website and download more books, watch more videos, if you found this interesting. And thank you so much for listening.